And those date to between six and 9,000 years old. So something was weird. Um, and who knows what those 19th century settlers were doing, but this seemed odd. Um, so what Jim did next was he decided to send in um, a finger bone from the skeleton to uh, a radiocarbon dating lab at UC Riverside. Um, and this is actually the first law that Jim Chatters broke, but um, we'll let that one go. He sent this finger bone in. Uh, radiocarbon dating is destructive analysis. You grind up the bone into powder. Um, you put it into basically a Geiger counter, and you count how, um, how much uh, radioactive carbon is left in the bone. And that's kind of like a little clock that basically tells you the last time that that organism exchanged oxygen and carbon uh, with the atmosphere. And the results came back on 8,600 years old. Um, and now Jim Chatters knew he was onto something quite interesting because there's not that many 8,000 year old skeletons uh, from North America. There's actually about three or 400 of them. Uh, but this is probably one of the most complete ones ever found. <clears throat> okay, so now um, other things start to kick in. Um, since uh, 1991, there's been a federal law called uh, the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, acronym is NAGPRA. Um, this was a law that was passed unanimously by our U.S. Congress. Can you imagine that? No. Happening? <laughs> Blows my mind. <laughs> um, and signed by the first President George Bush. And that this law called for um, uh, protection for Native American human remains which are often buried in unmarked graves, which in our country don't have other legal protections. Marked graves usually do at the state level, uh, but unmarked graves are not protected by law. Um, so this basically set up a process by which we find human remains, they turn out to be Native American. You contact, uh, you publish a notice in a newspaper. Um, tribes have two weeks to come forward and, and claim the remains, and then they're turned over to the tribes for reburial, and that's it. So the Army Corps of Engineers, is told by Jim Chatters that this, these remains are 2,500 years old. Um, they start the NAGPRA process. They put the notice in the newspaper. Um, the Umatilla tribe comes forward and says, we'd like to claim those re remains for reburial. And everything looks like it's heading that way. In a few weeks, these remains will be buried, probably, probably buried by the Umatilla tribe in one of their tribal cemeteries. Um, and this is when Jim Chatters uh, calls all his buddies and says, we have to stop this. These remains are too interesting, too important to let them be reburied. I want to study these things. Um, what can we do? And he gathered a, a group of eight people from all over the country uh, who came forward and asked the Army Corps to stop the repatriation process. The Army Corps said no, we're moving ahead. Um, and then they filed a, a lawsuit to stop it. Um, and this started a court case that lasted from uh, 1996 until 2004. Um, and cost all of us six million dollars in taxpayer dollars uh, to because we eventually lost. The U.S. government lost the case. Uh, and the eight scientists involved won their lawsuit. Of course, uh, then we paid their lawyer fees. Um, something I didn't know about lawsuits until this case came through. So I'm going to stay away from lawsuits myself. <laughs> okay, so um, here's some pictures of this discovery site on the shores of Lake Roosevelt. Um, so. Uh, the top left picture is a picture from the uh, fall of 1996 uh, when uh, uh, scientists uh, hired by the U.S. government went out to the site to see if they could learn anything about where Kenorkman came from. They assumed he maybe was buried and then was washed out of the bank there on the, on the edge of the lake um, up here. Um, then uh, that spring, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers decided to um, cover the site with something like 9 million cubic yards of gravel and riprap. Um, and no one's really been able to figure out why they did this. Um, the U.S. Congress actually voted to stop it, but it was too late. They'd already dumped all this stuff in by helicopter. Um, and this is what the site looked like um, a couple years later. And now it's actually, there's a lot of kind of big trees that have grown up along the site. So the site is effectively closed off for further archaeological investigation. It would be really difficult to go in there and do much. 